Hi guys. We're going to work on a pattern today that's very near and dear to my heart. We are going to be making knitted knockers. I use the patterns and instructions from the knittedknockers.org website and I'll have uh, links to the pattern in the description below this video. But uh, this is a project I do to help women who've had breast cancer and have lost a breast or both breasts from max mastectomies. And I make these and I give these out to women here in my community who can use them. So I make these by the dozens. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to show you how I do them. You can get the pattern from knittedknockers.org. I make all the different sizes. This is a C cup. <clears throat> this is a B cup. Or, yep, yeah, B cup. And I tag them. I put a little uh, tag on them after I make them. I safety pin a tag and uh, wash with delicates. And I just stick that little tag inside so I can remember what sizes they are. And then I take these to my doctor's office when I go to get my six month checkups. I had breast cancer and uh, get uh, every six months I go in for scans and tests. So I take a big batch of these and I give them both to my oncologist and to my breast surgeon and they give them out to women in my community. And they go through them pretty fast. So I try and take them a big batch every six months. And uh, they're fun to make. It's not a hard project to make. Um, so I'll show you how I do them. I get all kinds of different color yarns, mostly neutral colors, but sometimes I like to throw in some bright colors as well. But this is the yarn I use for this project. You can look on the knittedknockers.org website and they will give you a list of approved yarns that they've tested and these yarns are soft and uh, does not hurt your scar. The scar that's up against these will sit just inside your bra uh, up against your skin and they won't hurt your your scar. I'm using Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima Cotton, 100% Pima Cotton. I buy mine from Webs, which is yarn.com and it goes on sale every couple of months and I will get a big skein about this size skein and I can probably knit, I haven't exactly counted, but I can knit at least five or six depending on the sizes, but at least five or six knockers from one skein. So I, I buy some bright colors and then I, I usually get mostly neutral colors. That's what most people want. So that's where I get my yarn. It uh, typically runs when it's on sale, it's about $7 for a pretty big size skein, which I didn't think is too bad. It has, let's see here, has 220 yards. That's, that's pretty good. And I use a size five knitting needle. I'm gonna use, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do mine. It's a little different than their pattern in that I use two circular needles to knit mine in the round. The pattern on the website calls for DPNs, double pointed needles, and I prefer to work with circular needles instead. So I'll show you how I work the exact same pattern that's on their website, except I convert it to two circular needles. So let's get started. All right, so what you're gonna need for this project is the cotton. Uh, this is Ultra Pima cotton that I've wound into a skein or into a ball. I use two different stitch markers, two different ones, two different color ones, and I'll tell you why I do that in a minute. But I have a purple one and a white one, and then I have two circular needles that are size five. This yarn is DK weight, so I use a size five, and the, the pattern does give you instructions on how to use a size four needle and a sport weight yarn. This is DK weight. So I use size five needles. So let me show you how I get started. The pattern calls for no matter what size knocker you're going to make, you always start the same with the same amount of stitches. So you're gonna cast on 15 stitches. So let me do that here real quick. So I have a good long tail. When you're finished with these knockers, let me show you this tail real quick before we get started. It's tucked in here. I tuck the tail in 
but they all you want to leave when you're finished with your knocker you want to leave about a 10 15 inch tail and you the instructions will show you how to catch the stitches here so that when you give these out to people if they want to cinch up that hole they can pull on the tail and it will cinch up that hole so you want to leave the tail so that they can be they can be tightened so I'm gonna just loosen what I just tightened I'm gonna loosen that so that's when you start this thing you want to leave a good long tail just for that reason so I want to leave at least a good 15 in 12 to 15 inches so that's about right to there and now I'm going to cast on 16 stitches even though the pattern calls for 15 so I'll tell you why here in a minute so I need a little bit of extra yarn for the cast on of 15 stitches and then I'm going to put my slip knot you can make a slip knot any which way that you know how so let's do this get this started so I have my tail and then I have my thread going back to the yarn and I have my two color stitch markers and I'm going to do a long tail cast on and I'm going to cast on like I said I'm going to cast on 16 stitches even though the pattern calls for 15 I'll show you why so there's my first stitch is my cast on stitch and now I'm going to add stitches so that's two three four five and I'm not doing it super tight five six seven eight let me do go in real close if you want to see this up close what I'm doing <clears throat> that was eight nine Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, which is what the pattern calls for, and I add one extra stitch. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to be joining this this yarn I'm going to bend it in half right here in the middle and I'm going to join this so it's in the round and I take the very last stitch that extra stitch and I'm going to move this extra stitch over here and then my very first stitch when I start working in the round my very first stitch I'm going to do a knit two together and that creates the the join where these will start working in the round and by knitting two stitches together it makes the join stronger and it just looks neater so I'll show you that when we get there so I have my 16 stitches on one end of my needle and like I said I'm going to put these on two needles so I'm going to start from this end our cast on edge our very first stitch I'm going to start from this edge and I'm going to take off half the stitches I'm going to take off half the stitches and put them on my second needle so I'm going to slide all these stitches down to the other end of my needle and I'll have links in the description below of the needles I'm using and the size needles and length of the cord so I'm going to slide all these stitches down here to the very bottom and now I'm going to pick up my second circular needle my second needle and I'm going to take off half the stitches and I'm going to start adding my stitch markers here I'm going to add my first stitch marker so if you read the instructions for the double pointed needles they want you to use three double pointed needles and each double pointed needle should start with five stitches on each needle so like I said I'm not using double points but I I want to follow those instructions but I'm going to use circulars 
I'm going to use the stitch markers to denote the three double pointed needles. So I'm going to put five stitches for each, representing for each double pointed needle. So I'm going to move five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to add my first marker, which is my purple marker. I use a purple marker, a colored marker, for my very first marker because that helps me know where I'm at on the round when I start working in the round. So I always know that the, the stitches leading up to the purple marker is my first stick or my first DPN. So when I'm following the instructions, whenever it says DPN number one, I know that's all the stitches up to my purple marker. And then I'm going to just move two more stitches over. So that's about half. So that's about half. And I'm going to move, now that I have about half the stitches over here and half the stitches over here, now I'm going to um, put my second stitch marker on and I'm going to start working in the round here. Right now they're still split, but I'm going to work in the round. So in order to start working in the round, I need to have my stitches over here where my yarn is. My yarn is coming off of this last stitch. So in order to work it, I need to slide both sticks. I need to slide the stitches all the way down across the cord back onto the other size side of the needles. So I'm sliding both sets of stitches all the way down to this, this part, this part of the needle. And now I'm going to very gently turn this around so that I can move my stitch to do my join and then I can start knitting. So this very last stitch, that extra stitch, I'm going to take that stitch and move it from this needle onto this needle. And that will connect, that will connect right here. And then I can start working in the round. So I move my stitches very carefully up to the tips. I hold the yarn that goes back to the ball. I hold that over here in my hands just to kind of get it out of my way. And I'd kind of do the same thing with the tail. I kind of hold it back over here so it's not in my way. And then I just manually grab that, that last stitch, make it a little bit bigger, and I just take it off and flip it over onto that other needle. And then I tighten it up. So now I've got two stitches right here that I'm going to knit two together, that very first stitch. So I'm done using, for now, I'm done using the stitches here on this second, this bottom needle. So I'm going to pull the bottom needle so that just the cord is running through. And now these are the stitches I'm going to start knitting on. And they're already up here on the needle. This is my first double point, so to speak, my first double point up to the purple. So we're going we're gonna to start knitting. Now when I knit mine, I always start my very first round is a knit round. I don't do any increases. The pattern calls to start doing increases right away. I have found that it's just easier for me to start my increases on round two rather than on the very first cast on round. You can certainly do increases from the beginning, but I'm going to knit one round and then start my increases. So my very first stitch, I'm going to go into the two stitches. I'm going to make sure I've picked up both of those stitches and I knit them together. So that's my very first stitch. I tighten everything up a little bit, tighten it up. And now I'm just going to knit all the way around. So I should have five stitches, which I do three, four, 
five. Then I slip the marker over and then I'm going to knit these last two stitches. So I have two, two of my five stitches, two of the five. Then I'm going to flip this around and pull, since I just knitted these stitches, I'm going to pull the cord through those. And now these stitches that I haven't worked yet, I'm going to pull them onto the needle because I need to work them next. So I'm going to pull those up onto the, the needle that they're on. And they're a little tight just because we tend to cast on tighter than what we actually knit. So now I'm going to add a marker, my second marker, to this side. So I had two stitches here and I want to have five stitches between the markers. So one, two, three, four, five, add my second marker, and now I should have five stitches left for my third quote unquote double pointed needle. So now I've knit all the way around on 15 stitches, and now I'm going to start the instructions. So let me show you. Here I'm going to pull both both sets of stitches onto their cable. So let me show you. So I I always use this purple marker as my stick number one, my needle number one. So there's double pointed needle number one. Double pointed needle two would be between the markers, and then the third double pointed needle would be these last stitches. So that's how I can still follow the instructions for the three double pointed needles instructions, but I'm using two circular needles. Now let me show you the part of the knocker that we're, we're, actually, you, we're actually starting. So the 15 stitches are right here, and now we're going to start doing increases and we're going to start making from going from 15 stitches we're going to start spreading them out and depending on what size knitted knocker you're going to make is how many stitches you're going to increase but you can see here there's three sections one two three so this is the stitches I start with and then my my uh, marker would be here and then here's the stitches between the markers and then my second marker would be here on this line. So I have stick number one, stick number two, and stick number three. Okay, so that's where we're at. Then you will, you will do increases until you get to the size of knocker you want to make. Then you will work two rows of purl stitches where you just purl all the way around and that kind of divides the knocker and then the top half you will do decreases so you still have the three sections one two three but you'll start doing decreases until you get to the very tip you can they, there are instructions on how to make these with a little bit of an I-cord and you can make a, a small nipple, but they suggested not putting the nipples on them because most women request them without. So you could make some with and some without, but all the ones I make I do without. The instructions right off the bat says round one, which is really my round two, but we're going to call it round one. It says to knit to the last stitch and then do a knit into the front and the back. So again, I'm going to use just the first I'm going to use just the first 5 stitches as my beginning. So I'm going to knit to the last stitch before the marker and then I'm going to knit into the front and the back. It says repeat for needle 2 and 3. So we'll do the same thing. We'll knit 
to one stitch before the marker and we'll do a knit into the front and back and then we'll knit to the last stitch and do a knit into the front and the back so after this round we will have increased by three stitches all right so i pull my stitches up here i'm ready to go i'm going to do an increase in the very last stitch before the marker so i'm going to go ahead and just knit that first stitch can be a little tight typically but i knit now let me show you what i do in order to not get what's called laddering happening i knit two stitches and then i pull super super hard you can see from my thumb that i am pulling very tight on my first two stitches and that really closes the gap so you won't get a ladder effect so i whenever i start a new needle i pull really tight and now the rest of my stitches will be my normal tension I'm going to knit to the last stitch, which is the next stitch is the last stitch, and I'm going to knit into the front, and then reach around and knit into the back of the same stitch. I'm working an increase, I knit into the front and the back, fly my, switch my marker over, and then knit to the next marker so I knit here to the end of the, this then I flip this over pull the these stitches onto the cord pull the top row onto the onto the needle and I'm ready to work what I'm pulling up on my needles I'm going to knit to that last stitch Again, I'm going to pull pretty tight here. I knit two stitches and then I pull really, really tight to close up that gap so there won't be a ladder effect. So I pull tight and I'm going to do an increase in this next stitch, knit into the front and the back, move my marker, knit to the last stitch so this would be stick number three double pointed needle number three last stitch knit into the front and the back so i've completed row one we've completed row one so I'm going to go ahead now and do row two. Pull my needles, my stitches onto my needle. You can also work this same pattern using magic loop. If you want to use one long circular needle, there are instructions written on the website for using magic loop. I prefer two circulars rather than magic loop. So there I've got my stitches ready to go. I'm ready for round two two and round two says to knit into the front and the back of the very first stitch then knit to the last stitch and do another knit into the front and back so on this row we're going to be increasing the first stitch and the last stitch of each section and we will increase by six this time so this whole pattern up to this point is two different ro rows, two increase rows. One row, you always increase the last stitch, and every other row, you increase the first stitch. So we're going to do an increase on this very first stitch. You want to make sure you're picking up the yarn that goes back to the ball and not your tail because it's kind of long and you can kind of accidentally grab it. So I'm going to do a knit into the front and the back. I'm going to pull really tight because I want to close up the ladder. Pull tight. And now I'm going to knit to the last stitch before the marker 
and do another increase. It, last stitch, I'm going to do the increase. Now I'm going to do, this is my second needle, so now I'm going to do a knit into the front and the back on this first stitch. Change my needles, pull those back onto the cord, pull these on the cord back up onto the needle. Now this can be confusing sometimes when you just pick it up. You might get confused that this is the beginning of a row, but remember this is not the beginning of a row even though my, my stitches are, are just being started on this needle. This isn't the beginning of a row. The beginning of the row is this set of stitches here. So this is the second needle. The, this is the continuation of the stitches on the second needle. So I won't do an increase there. Sometimes you can kind of get sidetracked and forget where you are on the needles and do an increase there, but you don't want to. You just want to keep knitting. I'm going to pull really, really tight on my second stitch to keep that laddering from happening. Now I'm to the last stitch. I'm going to do an increase. There we go. Do an increase. Move my marker. I'm going to do an increase here on the first stitch. And then when I get to the last stitch, you can hear my cat meowing. I'm going to do an increase. Okay, I've just completed round two. So now you can kind of see where we're heading. You can kind of see where we're heading. So now we're going to repeat those same exact two rows over and over. So let me show you a little trick too to know where you are in the pattern. If you should put this down at this point, you can keep a little side note where you can tick off which row you just finished. I just finished row two. But if you put this down and you pick it back up later and you can't remember whether you just worked row one or row two, here's how you can tell. Since row two, we did an increase in the first stitch and we did a knit into the front and the back, you can kind of see here, let me point it out to you, there's a little bump. It almost looks like a pearl bump. Do you see the first stitch looks normal? The second stitch, there's a little bitty bump right there. That was the increase that we did in the row below, the row before. We did a knit into the front and the back. And doing that creates this little bitty bump. So when you pick your knitting up and you're ready to do the next row and you don't know if you're on row one or two, you look to see, do I see that little bump? If I see it, right underneath the second stitch, I see it, that means I'm ready for row one. If you don't see it, and it's a little further down, if you don't see it, then you know you're ready for row two. So since I did an increase on the first stitch the last row, this round I don't want to do an increase here. So I'm just going to knit normal. So I'm working row one. And working row one, we are only doing increases on the last stitch. So we're just going to knit to the last stitch and work the increase. There we go. Slide the marker over. 
Again, I, I just double check. I can see that little bump right below stitch number two. So I know I just need to knit past it. So just knit it without doing any increases. Swap over to the next needle. We'll slide them down here to the other end and we continue on. Again, that's not the beginning of a row. This is the middle of a row, middle of a second stick. So we continue on just knitting. I'm pulling tight on those first two stitches and then continuing on in my regular tension. Knit into the front and the back of the last stitch. You can see the little bump, so I'm going to continue to knit. So this is row one again, where we only increase on the last stitch. There's the last stitch. There we go. We've gone around a couple of more times, or at least three times. So now you can kind of see where we're going. See how it's starting to do increases and it's starting to spread out. So you're going to continue working those two rows. You continue to use those two rows until you've cast on or you've increased to whatever size you're making. And the instructions will tell you for each size how many stitches you want on each of the three needles. So in between my stitch markers, I will do increases until I have the right amount of stitches. And then I will do two rows of only purling. So I don't do any increases. I just purl two rows and that makes that divider and then the last part of the instructions says to do decreases always at the end of each double pointed needle so i will always i won't do any increases anymore i will just knit until i get to two stitches before the marker and knit two together then knit till i get to the two stitches before the marker knit two together and then knit to the end knit two together so you continually go the exact same way around the three needles or in our case the two needles but with the, the markers denoting the three sticks and you just keep decreasing always at the end until you get to where you have two stitches left in each section so i'll have two stitches a marker two stitches, a marker, two stitches. Then I cut my tail about 10 inches and I'll take a big yarn needle, a darning needle, and I will run the darning needle through the six stitches that are left. And then I cinch it and then I poke it through and tie a knot. And inside I just leave the, um, the yarn that's left you could weave it in but no one's ever going to see it so you just tuck it inside then i stuff it i get the polyfill at joann's i stuff it you tend to overstuff them let me switch back to my normal camera you tend to overstuff them and the reason you do that is the woman who gets this may want the knocker to be a little firmer she can take stuffing out and make it a little squishier and it's a whole lot easier for the person who receives these to take stuffing out to get the size and the shape they want rather than to have to go to the craft store and buy a big bag of fluff just to put a little more in so i overstuff them pretty good because the person who gets these can make them how she wants them so this is polyester inside so these can be the stuffing can be pulled out and you can wash these these are cotton so it's like a washcloth they can be washed and then you can stuff all the stuffing back in and continue going so like i said i make about 
I make about 40 of these or so every six months to take to my doctors. It's a great project. It really helps women who've had mastectomies and are flat chested or don't have much left on their chest. And it just gives them a little sense of looking and feeling a little more normal. They are very soft. It does not hurt up against your scar, obviously taking the pin out, but these laying against your scar does not hurt. And it feels very comfortable. They're very lightweight. It's a great project and a great organization. If you don't have people in your area that you can give these to, or you're not, you don't have a doctor's office that you could work with, you can go to knittedknockers.org and send your knockers unstuffed. You don't have to stuff them. You just, they'll give you instructions on how to do it, but you will tell them, let them know that you used yarn that was on their approved list and what size these are and you send them unstuffed to knitted knockers they'll stuff them and then they mail them out to women who need them so if you don't have anybody local that you can work with you can make your knockers and send them to knitted knockers they send out about a thousand knockers per month a thousand knockers per month is what they typically need and send out and they need all the sizes so give it a try if it's something you're interested in doing give it a try they're not hard to make if you need further instructions or want to see how I finish one leave that in the comments below I'll show you how I do the pearl row and then how I end the the uh, knocker if you're interested in that they also have many videos on their website on knittedknockers.org if you want to see how they tell you to finish them um, you can watch them there so I hope that helps I enjoy making these they take just a few hours to make and like I said I really enjoy working on two circular needles rather than the double points and that's how I do it so thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the comment section. And uh, we'll be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching.